This is the actual Unabomber's cabin being reassembled at FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C., where it sat on display for the public since 2020, and it managed to outlive its famous inhabitant. So, how has the cabin survived this long, and what can it still tell us? But first, we need to start with the arrest of the Unabomber himself, Ted Kaczynski. Kaczynski was captured by the FBI in 1996, ending a serial bombing spree across the U.S., which lasted for 17 years. He was a former math professor at the University of California, Berkeley, who authored a 35,000-word manifesto that blamed industrialization and technology for society's decline. This is where the cabin comes in. Kaczynski built homemade explosive devices in inside this one room 10 by 12 foot cabin in the middle of the mountains in Montana, and then mailed or hand delivered them to targets that included universities, airlines, and tech related offices or storefronts. Ultimately, three and wounding almost two dozen others. In the end, it was Kaczynski's own brother who helped lead the FBI to the cabin after recognizing the writings of the manifesto, which was published strategically in the Washington Post and the New York Times. Kaczynski was later convicted, spending decades in a supermax prison in Colorado before being transferred to a prison medical facility in North Carolina, where he reportedly died by according to the Associated Press. But ever since his arrest, the cabin has emerged as a sort of haunting look inside the mind of a calculated killer. Agents said the cabin was filthy and contained bomb-making materials in glass jars, the hoodie that was shown in suspect sketches, and a bomb ready to go underneath his bed. After Kaczynski's arrest, the cabin was transported from Montana to Sacramento, California for the jury to observe in the trial. In 2008, the FBI loaned the cabin to the museum in Washington, D.C. for an exhibit detailing the media's unique role in Kaczynski's eventual capture. For years, guests could apparently see the witch wall Kaczynski slept against thanks to the bodily oils that, for years, seeped into the wood. The cabin was returned to the FBI in 2020 and reassembled for the Bureau's own in-house museum, chronicling one of the Bureau's longest manhunts ever.